You approach an undead, standing proud at the lip of a broken bridge. Understandably fearless of the fatal drop, she gazes into the lava sputtering below. Turning to you, she motions to the black ring corpses at her feet. Good riddance to bad rubbish, eh? Only thing I like less than black ring are trolls. God woken, are you? I thought so. I see it on you like an aura. I see such things, for I am the Watcher. And I seek such things, for I am a seeker. The Meister! She bats one's skeletal hand in a truly derisive fashion. Her crackling laugh sounds like dry leaves whirling in the wind on an autumn night. <laughs> the Meister's ragtag band are but a pale imitation of the tradition they sought to revive. I am one of the original Seekers. We swore to be Knights of the Council, Guardians of Godwoken, and Defenders of Divinity. Together, we failed. But still, I try. Alone. The Knight of Duna has been cursed. Void runs through his veins where Source once flowed. I am sworn to protect the Council and all within it. But that same oath renders me unable to lift a blade against him. Release the knight's good spirit from his corrupted shell, Godwoken. Do this, and I will gift you with the last standard of the original Seekers. If you seek ascension, it could help you greatly in the trials along the way. Silence greets your question. This silence lasts quite some time. Just when you are about to break it, she speaks. That question is unbefitting of a Godwoken. Trust that when you offer your help to those in need, the help you receive will be what you need in turn. I ask again, will you aid me? Will you take down the corrupted Knight of Duna? My thanks, and the thanks of Duna's knights too. In life, I knew him well. He would hate to be like this. Believe me, you would be releasing him from torment. Please do. that is not your own rises within your skull. You are no child of Duna. Leave now, or face his wrath. With great armored fists, the Knight of Duna pounds his own helmet rhythmically. The helmet has buckled inwards in places. Rivulets of blood trickle from beneath the visor. <laughs> Come, hear my joke. What is it that I guard? Ha! Wrong! I guard nothing. Do you hear me? Nothing! He showed me. He leans forward. Glimpsed beneath the crumpled helmet is a mangled face and crazed, unblinking eyes. It's all a joke! There's nothing to guard, only lies. You'll see for yourself once you're dead. The Knight of Duna's features slacken. He looks almost calm, but the moment passes and his maniacal skull creeps back. No more talking, hear me? There's only one way this will end. The Knight bows his head and exhales. When he looks up once again, there's something different in his eyes. A passing flicker of lucidity. Godwoken, I see you now. Pray to the altars. Don't let the void consume the world. The madness will return. I won't let myself become a danger to you. Farewell. Carved onto the face of the altar is a dedication in honor of Duna, patron of the dwarves. 
Long may their mountain halls stand as a testament to him. Hard stone melts into cool water at your touch. Before you stretches a lake, or rather, a mire. The waters are fetid and rotten, the air filled with choking miasma. Through the dense fog, you hear a voice. Please, cleanse this place. Let me breathe. The miasma clears as the power of your blessing skips across the surface. You look down to see your face gazing back at you, reflected in now crystalline water. High above your reflection, the full moon stands vigil. You step back from the altar, the vision fading before you. As you leave, you notice a lunar rune has appeared, carved into the rock. Ah, oh, God Woken, you have succeeded where I could not. Please accept this with my thanks, and the thanks of all those I served alongside. The blessings of the original Seekers upon you. She hands you a small yet heavy trinket, crafted of tarnished metal. Though cold, it feels comforting to the touch, like a worry stone or a familiar childhood toy. You! Stop! Explain yourself! The elf's deep, golden eyes go wide. A strange smile dances across his mouth, and he starts to roar with laughter. You! The gods chose you as their champion. Run home, little godwoken. You find only death here. Pfft, we have all swatted flies. That is not what lies ahead of you. You are not worthy of this temple. Leave. Run back to your hearth. Cower there while death searches for you. The laughter dies from the elf's eyes, replaced with weary seriousness. Good. It is proper that the godwoken should not be so easily pushed away. Too many are not ready for the trials ahead. You may proceed. You find no threat here. Not from me, at least. The island is not overrun. This temple stands strong. The other gods were clearly not as powerful as Terse and Delius. In his fortress, the Black Ring do not succeed. They do not kill the Godwoken, but... But they do not fail. Now, knights and Godwoken both cower behind monsters, tied to sticks. Yes, he resides here for a time. He and his troop commandeered the top level of my temple. He is not the Godwoken I expect. Few ferocious warriors bring an army. Or shrieking monsters tied to posts. I protect the Godwoken of this temple from the Black Ring, from the Magisters, from all threats of this world, but not from other Godwoken. What one Godwoken does to another is divine business. It must not be interfered with. It is not the place of a knight to reveal such things. We walked your path once. You must discover it yourself, as we did. Turn to the gods. Their guidance alone will lead you. The elf raises a bushy eyebrow. One demands from one's lessers. I am your equal, Godwoken. Once, I stand where you stand. My gods chosen, fighting to be the divine. The trials do not kill me, but neither do I triumph. Another becomes divine, and I remain here to serve Terse and Delius and protect his chosen. May Ralic ever watch over you. The temple must hold. The temple must hold. The temple must hold. We held them off. We held them off. We held them off, and Alexander was saved. You serve the God King's scum.
cornered. The bear gives you a serious look. She opens her mouth wide, her great fangs on display for you. Then she clears her throat. Can I ask you a philosophical question? Okay, then. <laughs> if a tree falls in a forest and the whole place is covered in death fog, does anyone care? Does anyone hear what? I don't know. The death fog covered the forest and everybody died. Didn't even have time to scream. Tree falls then. I don't care if anyone heard it happen. I want to know if anyone cares. She gives you a long, wet-eyed look. Her lip begins to tremble, which on a bear is an impressive sight. She tries not to cry. I thought no one cared. I thought no one cared but elves and bears. This gives me hope, this does. Lots of hope. Oh, thank you. With a sigh, she turns away. The priestess is oblivious to you. Instead, she's locked in frantic, desperate prayer. Oh, mighty Duna, save your children. Deliver us from the void. Oh, mighty Duna, save your children. Deliver us from the void. Oh, m The elven priest fervently prays. Tell us what to do, brave Tyrsandelius. The Black Ring are on the threshold, and yet they fear us. I know it. They fear who we are. They fear the elves. Have you been to the temple of Zolstissa? Is the King's Knight safe? Is Zolstissa's chosen champion safe? Good news, at least for now. I thank you for your kindness. I shall pray for my king's deliverance. He lowers his head, closes his eyes, and silently begins to pray. Be at ease, sister. Have you been to the temple of Zolstissa? Is the king's knight safe? Is Zolstissa's chosen champion safe? I... I... I was not ready to die. I cannot serve the Lord Zolstissa if I am dead. I pray the temple has not crumbled. And Zol Stissa's champion is not dead. Ha! Ah, ew! He stands head bowed as the blessing courses through him. He raises his hands before him, marveling at their glow. He looks at you at last, his mouth agape. He sinks to one knee. He struggles to his feet. I. Who will you destroy to save the kin? He stares at you in awe. Tears come to the corner of his eyes. He begins to rock back and forth, spellbound in religious ecstasy. He begins to pray. There shall be a new divine, and he shall be a red-skinned prince. There shall be a new divine, and he shall be a red-skinned prince. There shall be a new divine. And he shall be a red-skinned prince. Make 
betrayed. The creature runs a black tongue across its maw while staring at you hungrily. For a brief moment, you see row upon row of jagged teeth stretching right back to its gullet. A distant, hungry place. Your war draws me. Make trade or leave. A customer. Perhaps you'd like to trade. Find something to safeguard your... His lascivious eyes flick over you to skin-crawling effect. Vulnerable flesh. A distant place called Nemesis. I couldn't resist the lure of this world, though. Such bloodshed and despair truly does loosen purse strings. Like this left in the world. Not since Lucian used the death fog on the elves. Eyes closed, the tiger seems to be praying. I am the last of my hide, my stripe, my streak. All of us but I fell dead in the mist when the two legs had their war. I pray to thee to bring us back to save us from our end. She cocks her head to listen to a voice you cannot hear. If the Covenant be in good faith, O oh black-winged god, and all the forest tigers shall return, then I shall accept your... She opens her eyes and turns to you. Or what? Shall you kill me with your fog of death like you did my cousins? This is our only chance to live. She closes her eyes. A low growl rises in her throat. They all shall die, my king, and I shall start. She stares directly at you and bares her teeth. With the He-Man. Stranger, you must help us. I beg of you. The ghostly tiger bares her teeth at you, a triumphant glint in her eye. When the God King brings the forest tigers back, and we rise to rule, you shall be the first to die. For you, there shall be no return. I am the last of my hide, my stripe, my streak. You cannot take me, for I shall rise. You cannot take me, for I shall... She shall... nothing. God welcome. The mother tree calls you. Follow the spirit. Climb to the heart of the tree. The mother awaits. The mother tree calls you, God woken.
Mother, you don't look well. How vulnerable you are. That heart. I am the scion of the Mother Tree. Her heart speaks through me. The scion of the Mother Tree. Let me talk to her, please. She and I have business. I have the Shadow Prince's heart. Enjoy. The scion eats the lizard's heart, one chamber at a time. One, two, three, and then it is gone. She holds her hand out. This may aid you on your journey. It is a powerful boon. You may use it as you wish. Sibyl. Your actions cause great pain to the mother. You cause great pain to all elves when you run from duty. You cause great pain to yourself. But now you are here, the mother forgives. It is time for you to fulfill your destiny. You are the prime scion. You are the daughter of the mother tree. You are the one that will replace her. You must take root now. The mother is sick, soon she dies. It is time. The elves need a new mother. They need you. Take root, Sabil. The mother demands it of you. This is a momentous decision. I'm not entirely certain. You do? Then... Then I think you're right. I'll not do it. Prime scion. Prime traitor. Strong is bark. Weak is flesh. Even this dying heart will shred you. yourself.
Sibyl touches your arm. Look, it's Sahela. Sibyl, it is so good to see you once more. I must speak with you. It is of the greatest importance. At last I see clearly. I know what must be done. The mother is sick. She is weak. Her grip slips at last. You make her so. You kill her scions. You are strong now, Sabeel. You are prime scion. You are godwoken. This is a unique opportunity. The impossible is now possible. Kill her. Free us from her tyranny, please. Finish what you start. One more kill. You must strike at her heart. Do this for me. Do this for all of us. Set us free. You want the mother tree dead? Quite the change of heart since last we met. I know. But now she is weak. I can speak truth. The mother stops progress. The mother stops lovers. The mother forbids. The mother commands. The mother plots. The mother wants vengeance. She is hollow. But all elves want is to live. I know I can count on you, Sabeel. You who loves her freedom above all. You must climb the temple to find the mother's heart. And then you must destroy it. Set yourself free, Sabeel. Set us all free. Sibyl lays a hand upon your forearm. Step back. I have business with the mother. I'm going to kill her. Sibyl reaches out to the tree. She allows her power to burgeon and grow. And then she directs it all at the heart. The tree shudders and then screams. The heart of the mother tree withers and dies. All is still. What's on your mind, darling? She sighs. Deep down, it... It feels like a betrayal. A just betrayal. I know that many will say I failed my people, but... I don't think I have. Even as I sat on the Prime Scion's throne as a child, watching pilgrims pass by in worship, I could hear her whisper, much like the Master would whisper, Mother and master. There was precious little difference between the two. Both of them longed for power so absolute it's no more than an abstract. Yet it is that very abstract that causes so much actual misery for those that stand in its way. My heart may be conflicted, but my mind is not. I did the right thing. Sebil, you killed the mother. We are free. We may go where we please. My heart is filled with gladness that you are with us, Sabil. I hope to see you again. 
I hope you find that which you seek. Set yourself free, Sabeel, like you have set us all free. Whoever you are, I suggest you back away before... Stand down, Magister Rowe. This one is an old acquaintance, shall we say. Let him approach. I... yes, my lord, of course. Well, if it isn't my killer, I didn't expect you to make it this far, sorcerer. No, quite the opposite, in fact. I am more alive than ever. I walk in my father's footsteps, and soon I shall become the divine. I do, and plainly, you do not. Godwoken you might be, but you are not worthy of becoming divine. Every word you speak betrays the fact. Only I have the will, the strength, to do what is necessary. And now that those traitors, Dallas and Friedemann, have no influence over me, the way forward is clear. Make no mistake, Godwoken. I do not need to work with you. I will enter the Council when I am fit and ready. But you are desperate. That much is clear. Make yourself of use to me and I shall help you unlock the Council. You must strike down the one who leads the Black Ring on this island. That is my price. Do you really think the future Divine should take such risks? Besides, you're the one seeking help. Perhaps you can put your murderous skills to use for the greater good. She had her accomplice, Vriedemann, pose as someone who could train me how to master my godwoken powers. But it was a lie. They sought to hinder, not help. While I was being occupied by Vriedemann, Dallas began taking over the order. I confronted them once I returned from the Hall of Echoes, and the pair of them tried to kill me. They must be Black Ring agents, tasked with preventing me from ascending. They won't succeed, though. I know what needs to be done, and I have good, loyal Magister and Paladin companions to help me see that it is done. Wrong. That proves I am the only one who is worthy. I have to decide who lives and who dies, for the sake of the greater good. That is what true power demands of you. Only I have the will, the strength, to do what is necessary. And now that those traitors, Dallas and Friedemann, have no influence over me, the way forward is clear. He's known as the Sallow Man. My father faced him in battle during the Great War. He's a wicked creature, a master of illusions who hides in the shadows. 
and sends others to do his bidding. Alexander produces an old cowl and mutters an incantation. The cloth glows a cool blue for a moment before settling back. He hands the cowl over to you. My father concocted this charm so that he could face the sallow man in battle. The cowl has now been laced with its essence. Wear it, and he will be forced to reveal himself. Succeed, and perhaps you can join me inside the council. There we can see who shall be the next divine, once and for all. You're thinking the same thing. Alexander wants to be the new divine. Divinity requires a certain strength of character this whippersnapper woefully misses. Over my dead body. He hardly has his father's qualities. Besides, he's not to be trusted. Step carefully, stranger, and do... The spirit of a Magister Priestess kneels on the ground, her hands tied behind her back. She flinches as the ghostly sound of tortured screams from nearby catches your ear and hers. She steals a look upwards at the source of the screams, then looks away again with a shudder. Another ghostly scream intensifies, hitting a peak, then abruptly ends. Panic washes over the Magister's spectral features. She's next. In an instant, the ghostly imprint of pain and suffering is no more. You behold a face you've seen before, in blackened glass. Soul sickness incarnate, the rotten flesh of the world's most shameful desires, an all-knowing affliction. This is the God King's pallid envoy walking the world as the Sallow Man. You feel him in your head, scrabbling for purchase amongst your thoughts, looking for a way in, his madness and his anger and his hate banging on the door of your mind. A cacophony assails you. A melee of clanging bells and scraping nails, mixed with laughter and insanity and pain. Then, the sallow man ejects you, and you realize you were never in his mind at all. He was in yours, with all his agonizing, caterwauling lunacy. He knows you want the secrets of the Council of Seven. He lets you know he has them, and that you will never take them from him. Screaming, biting rage blazes across your mind, and a great roar emerges from his mouth, as if all the fury beneath the world was coming to burn the very earth, and in your mind, the roar becomes a word. Yell! Ah! <laughs> 
You feel his hate, his rage, his blinding thirst for blood, your blood. He reaches into your mind and fails. He has no power now. The power is all yours. He howls in pain and hate and rage and tries to push you away, but he cannot. So he closes his eyes and summons everything. A raging torrent of memories washes through you, so fast you can barely see an image before it's gone. An elven child, the moon, the sun, the void, the dirt, the death in the fog amongst the trees. And at the last, part of the key to the mountain, Ralik, Vrogir, and Zor Stissa worshipping the sun. Suddenly, for the first time since you first saw his face, he shows you fear. The God King promised him immortality, but now... No! Such a pleasure. Did you miss me? Wait, don't answer that. Of course you did. My lord's given me another chance, such is his grace and wisdom. As for you, well, you're out of chances. How many have you had by now, I wonder? Two, three, a hundred? It must all be a blur for you. Ha <laughs> ha! Open your eyes. War, slavery, disease. Void, death, and the fall of a divine. Do you suppose these happy accidents? His work is all around you, and you can consider me. She peers at you through narrow eyes. Her next words do not pass her lips, yet pierce your ears as if she'd spoken them. His agent of death. You muster as much energy as you can, yet the spirit remains whole. She cackles at every gesture you make and every limb you contort in your futile efforts.
two black ring wargs, heaving stinking mounds of gristle and malice, play like puppies with a large crimson gem. Boys, away, now. Uh, no. Well, maybe. Uh, okay, maybe. Uh, no. Yes. I'm hungry. Gonna find food. Uh, okay, yes. Two tight bound masses of hair and fang amble away in search of food. You wonder if this is what you think it is, an imp-built pocket realm. Within the Crimson Crystal, a galaxy of stars seems to twinkle, and beyond the stars lies a strange and wondrous realm. It's as you'd hoped. The stars swirl and move, and form a face, the face of an imp. Looky, looky, looky here! What's red and black and blue all over? Oh! Rightly, 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 right! Oh, very rightly, right! Come inside! The face dissolves, and the stars begin to swirl. And so too does your head, as you are taken to... I've always wanted to see an English pocket realm. Me too. This is fascinating. The doors loom above you, one step closer to the Council, one step closer to Divinity. The others must surely be thinking the same. After all, only one of you can ultimately ascend. Time for an honest discussion, perhaps. Beast looks not at you, or even through you, but beyond you, beyond the Academy, to a place far from you, but close to him. I know I talk a lot, but I don't talk about the Isle of Mists that much. No reason to, most of the time. Can't stop thinking of that time today, though. My crewmates and me, we can handle prison. We can handle death, even. But ain't no one should handle the aisle. You don't see the mist. You, you don't hear it. It's just there. In front of you, on top of you, and in you. Then the ripping starts. Your dreams ripped away, your thoughts, your self. It's in you, and it is you. Your body is meat, perfectly preserved. The mist keeps it safe. It's your soul that's boiled. I'm not looking to ascend because I want the power. I'm not doing any of this for me. I'm doing it so the rebels never need face the isle. So the mist will never be in them. So they can be truly free, fearless, themselves. As soon as I stop Operation Downfall, I rejoin them. As far as I'm concerned, that's where my divine duties begin and end. Whatever words he meant to come next go unspoken. The wide-eyed and tongue-tied dwarf can only nod and blush. He trusts you. He will be at your side. We're finally here, on the doorstep of divinity. Merits a word, doesn't it? After all, only one of us can become the new divine. But don't worry, I won't stand in your way. 
From the moment you came back for me on that ship, I knew you were special. You've proven it time and again. She kisses you on the cheek. You will be the new divine. I will remain myself. All I ever wanted, really. Well, well, well. This is, as they say, it. Divinity. Surreal, is it not? So much more insubstantial, almost, than desiring an empire or vengeance or fame. That said, I'll not deny I very much aspire to the surreal. No greater emperor than the one that sits on the throne of gods. He sighs deeply. Oh, you'll probably think this highly uncharacteristic of me, but I'm inclined to agree. This journey of ours, this strange and violent pilgrimage, it has changed some preconceptions. It's not so much that my desires have changed. It's that they've multiplied. They were like, like a diamond kept hidden in a secret pocket for none but me to see. But then the diamond was forced into the open, held against the light. And in that light, so many colours I never knew were there. Sadha, the promise of dragons. I value them more highly now even than divinity. The final prize is yours. I'm content to follow a more unexpected path.